I want to talk MVP really quick because as I said, Giannis was 10 to one, which I don't understand. Giannis is second in points per game. He's fifth in rebounds per game. He's shooting 55% field goal, which is 10th. 11.6 free throw attempts, which is second. It's 30 and they're honest free throw attempts for the record. 31.1 PR, which is third. Uh, win shares, he's second. Usage, he's third. And beat is first. Win shares per 48, he's second. And beats fifth. His VORP's higher. We got all the advanced stats. If you're looking at what's their record when he plays, he's 39 and 20. And beat is 39 and 19 when he plays. Jokic is 40 and 25. Going down the line, the Giannis and Bead stats are either even or there's a slight edge to Giannis. There's a little bit of an eye test thing with Embiid because he's had some big games on national TV. I also think he has a bigger fan base and more people in the media, not to sound like conspiracy bill, including some people at the Sixers. So there's more people kind of advocating for him. But to me, it's like, I, I would say a hair edge to Giannis with about 12 games left. But I still think Jokic is the MVP. I would say that would be my vote right now. Now, if they fall into the playing game, I'd, I'd have to reevaluate because I don't know if I could do an MVP who's in the playing game. But the Giannis, the Jokic stuff, right now, they're Denver's 40 and 25 when he plays. He's ninth in points per game, second in rebounds per game, and seventh in assists, which is fucking nuts. He's top 10 in all three categories. You go through every advanced metric. He's first in PR. He's first in wind shares. He's first in wind shares 48. He's first in VORP. His true shooting 65.2. You pick an advanced thing, the offensive rating, defensive rating stuff. His defense, the rating stuff is surprisingly good with him. Obviously, he's not Giannis. He's not as threatening as Embiid. But he's a really good defender this year. So he's a slight edge. Um, make the case for Giannis for me why I should change my mind. Well, I think it just comes down to what how you define MVP. If it's like the best advanced stats, then it's clearly Jokic. If it's the if this guy wasn't here, how truly horrific would this team be? Also Jokic. If it's the best player on the best team or the best player in the league, then I think it's Giannis. And I think that that's sort of the one thing I think is underappreciated this year is it it's traditionally been the case that the Western Conference top to bottom is much better than the East. This year, there's a lot of bad teams in the Western Conference. So I think yep. that's why you have a situation where Denver's record is actually not that far behind uh, both Philly and Milwaukee, even though they're relatively low in the standings. But that's because there's like seven good teams in the Western Conference. So they all fatten up on these on these terrible teams. And whereas the East, you know, there's it, the depth is better, which is, uh, you know, it hasn't been the case for like 20 years. And so I think the record thing is. I feel bad holding it against him on one hand if he's in the playing game, if the record's so similar. On the other hand, it's like, well, your record is fattened up a bit. I think he's going to say anything about Miami, by the way, the Southeastern Conference or Southeastern Division. Not good. Uh, but I, I think it just comes to your definition. I mean, I agree with you. It's hard to give the MVP to a guy who finished in sixth or seventh in, in his in his conference. That's really yeah, the that's, biggest the thing. The playing game is kind of a deal breaker for me. Well, and the other thing, too, is if you look back... You'd have to I mean, be way this, better than everybody else to, to for me to vote for you if you're a playing team. Yeah, and it's, it, this is always a dicey argument because who knows how the future is going to play out. But are we going to look back at Giannis and think he didn't win enough MVPs? And that's a weird thing to say given he's 27 he's already won two. But I we're looking at... I, I mean, I my first appearance on this podcast, I think like years ago, I told you like he has goat potential and you almost fell off your chair. Right. But I think that's exactly what you're seeing. I mean, there was a good article in The Ringer a couple of days ago about, you know, LeBron's passing, you know, Malone and, and who could potentially pass LeBron one day. The only guy really that has a chance is Giannis. And because KD kept getting hurt, I think. I think KD yeah, was in the mix, but he missed too many yeah, games. Yeah, KD was in the mix, but missing two years is, is just way too much. And, you know, this is a guy that, again, he's he's better this year. He's better than he was last year. You, looking back, and you, especially when you consider the playoffs, which obviously aren't part of MVP, but the playoffs established pretty clearly that he was MVP caliber. I mean, his back-to-back -back MVPs look very good in hindsight after, you know, looking, looking a little shaky after, the, you know, they got knocked out. And so I think there's a sort of a, a broad historical argument that, you know, we're watching the best player of this era in his prime, putting up stats that are MVP level for a team that is probably still the favorite or one of the favorites to win the title. 
And that seems like a pretty solid reason that he should be MVP. Um, I'm not going to feel bad if Jokic wins. I love Jokic. He's amazing to watch. Again, I think just sheer value compared to the baseline of a team. He he has it sort of wrapped up. But I'm certainly you know going to be pleased and not feel any reason to make defenses if Giannis wins it. Interesting about Giannis with the points. So he's at 14,000. He's age 27. LeBron, after his age 27 season, was already at 19,000 points. So Giannis would, I mean, it's, I think LeBron's going to be really tough to catch. I personally don't Oh, yeah, think no, I, I think the Ringer put the chances at like 20% or it might have been 12%. It would be, basically is the only guy that was in a realistic realm of possibility. I don't think it will happen either. I mean, LeBron is also very thirsty to, <laughs> to get that. Well, title. that's the other thing. <laughs> I'm he's, not sure if, um, yeah, he's, pa- he's, I don't want to say he's padding, but he's playing really well on a bad team and putting up big points. Yeah. The problem, I don't, I don't think there's a guy in the league who has a chance at whatever total LeBron's going to end up with. Hey, yeah, no, Giannis I agree. I agree. is probably the best bet, but that's, I, it's a long, long shot. He would have to, because the other problem with Giannis is, He's not putting, like LeBron had all these seasons where he was playing 37, 38 minutes a game. I think he had one season where he played like 40 minutes a game and he was at 30 points a game, but with like real minutes too, playing 75, 80 games. Milwaukee's always been really careful about Giannis and not putting those miles on him, you know? Yep, but he's still averaging 30 a game, so. Yeah, seriously. Well, the records, Milwaukee and and Philly are both 44 and 27, Denver's 42 and 30. I don't, I hate, we've turned into this basketball society where we try to figure out all this stuff with 12 games to go. I think this is one of those seasons where I really want to see where everybody lands. I also want to see who ducks Brooklyn in the seventh seed. Because we saw Philly last night. That was six game in nine, nine, in nine nights. I get why they would rest and beat. I don't totally get why they would rest Harden. And Harden has now ducked Miami twice on the Sixers. But it doesn't seem like Philly's too anxious to get the two seed. Do you think Milwaukee, my my feeling on them, and I said this to Rosillo on Sunday, I don't think they give a shit. If they have to play Brooklyn round one, I think they would bring it on. You don't see any ducking potential with them, do you? I don't think so. I mean, what, this happened last year where the last game of the season, the Bucs could have tossed the game and avoided uh, Miami in the first round, which obviously, you know, had the demons of the previous year sort of hanging over them. And they put it to the locker room, like, do you want to do? And they're like, no, like, we, we, we want to win this game and if we play Miami so be it and they won the game and then they swept M- Miami in honestly pretty humiliating fashion I think people yeah. like Bryn Forbes outscored Jimmy Butler in that series to sort of put it in context and I, we, we actually talked after the first game where M- Middleton hit that game winning shot and they got the monkey off their back and then it was it, it was it was over and I think the they probably feel pretty similar about Brooklyn which is I think there's probably some aspect. I mean, no, I don't know about the team. Speaking personally, there's some aspect where I wouldn't mind facing Brooklyn just to sort of shut up everyone talking about Katie's toe. Uh, yeah. And uh, and so I, I I'm open to whoever. Obviously, you know, you would always like sort of an easier path, but there's something. I mean, the Bucks' path last year, you know, was was not exactly easy at all, and it made it all the more gratifying to sort of win it and. Hey, br- bring them on! Bring them on! I'm feeling, I'm, I'm feeling good. These are, might be famous last words. I'm gonna, these are gonna be shoved in my face, but I, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> that on Fanduel, Brooklyn is somehow the favorite to win the East at plus two eighty. They're a seven or an eight seed right now. Milwaukee's plus two ninety. Philly's plus three fifty. Miami, who's still in the one seed, is plus four eighty. And the Celtics, who have been the best team in the conference for two and a half months now, they're plus six fifty. I don't remember. I personally think it's a big four and then I have Philly kind of on the outside looking in because I don't trust Embiid and Harden to stay healthy for three straight playoff rounds. I don't trust their bench. I don't trust new teams. I feel like like Philly is so high variance because what they do have is they have a matchup nightmare in Embiid, like who almost no one can really, it's a similar to the Giannis idea. Like no one has anyone that can really handle Giannis. And when it comes down to a playoff series, it's possible that you just have that one guy that just is the difference in the series. And Philadelphia has that potential more than just about any team other than Milwaukee. So I think they definitely have a chance. At the same time, Embiid has never shown he can hold up. He's never shown he can handle the stamina of playing more minutes in the playoffs. He always falls apart in the fourth quarters. 
and he gets injured. And meanwhile, you know, well, we're going to have Harden ride to the rescue. Harden of all his, you know, great playoff <laughs> yeah. successes in the past. So I think there, there's, I could see them going to the finals. It wouldn't shock me. I really like Embiid. I, I, I would, I would like to see him succeed. But at the same time, they could lose in the first round too, and it wouldn't be a surprise. There, there, it, it, it's hard to imagine a greater high variance team than this particular 76ers team. They could really go either direction. I would actually be shocked if they made the finals. I don't think they have enough. I don't trust the heart and pedigree. I don't, you know, Doc is the coach. Embiid, yeah, as you the, mentioned. Yeah, the Doc does not help. Yeah. Embiid having to play 40 minutes a game basically for three straight rounds to get him there and then how good the rest of the teams are. You know, I, to me, it's like I, Milwaukee's still a team to beat. KD and Kyrie in any series, I'm just um, worried, even though I think Milwaukee and Boston have the right teams to beat them. And then Miami is the wild card. Butler hasn't been playing well lately. They really rely on Tyler Harrow. Um, it, it's a team that do, that I, they ha- they can kind of coast with that one seed if they want. But like last night, they could have ended it and then rested a lot of their guys, and they somehow lose to Maxi and those dudes. So um, yeah, it, it, I mean they're so they're also very high variance just because they rely on, on their three point shooting so much. And you which know, I like, this- which I like going against in the playoffs if you're going to be relying on it like that. Yeah, because I think, you know, we saw this really last year with, with the Suns series. And I actually felt that way coming out of the the Bucks, the first Bucks suns game where the Suns blew it open in the second half. I actually came out of that feeling pretty, pretty good. And the reason is because you could see the core advantages that Milwaukee had relative to Phoenix were still there. And what happened in the finals was Phoenix is like this finely tuned machine. And that yeah. machine will chop you up in the first couple of games of a series. But it's a seven game series. And if you're bigger and more physical and you are just beating on them game after game after game, suddenly that that fine tuned machine starts to develop, you know, a, a couple problems and stuff doesn't work so smoothly together. And this is a thing about the Bucs that I think is they're I think they're never a team that's going to do like a 16 0 run like those Warriors teams or the Lakers back, you know, 20 years ago. But they will grind you down. And, and the physicality is just. You get to game five, game six, and here comes Giannis at the basket again. And you're like, my God, please stop. <laughs> like, right. I just, I, I can't handle this anymore. And you, Holiday, similar. Holiday's just mauling guys up and down the floor. And that's a really tough thing in a seven game series. Well, it's Boston has a similar thing, right? They can win if they don't shoot well from three. Yeah. They can well, win it, with it, defense it, and athleticism, yep. and they could still pull out games. And, and the thing with wings is, you know, you know, it, I mean, this is a big thing for a big, opportunity for Tatum for sure to show can he really just be be that guy I mean I think the, uh, the I always knew intellectually how much different the regular season and the playoffs had become you know watching yeah. other teams but then watching the Bucks the last few years where they had these dominant regular seasons and then would flame out in the playoffs and seeing how they had to adjust to win last year I mean you feel it viscerally like it, it just it's so much different and you need a guy like a Tatum. And I, I can understand now why people are so high on him. I mean, just, yeah, you say you only have one guy who can go create a shot at the end of the game. You also have a guy that can go and create a shot at the end of the game. And, and it's surprising how many teams that seem like great teams don't actually have that. And so this idea of just grinding them down on defense and just having a guy that puts you on his shoulders, I think, it, I think it's a good formula. Um, you know, like I said, I, the I fear, hate to hurt you the up, fear but I think with- it looks pretty good. The fear with that da- is what Dallas showed, where they just trapped Tatum 35 feet from the basket. It made us play yep. four and three, and I just think teams are going to end the playoffs. 